And her dad went all the way to Australia. This is going to be the most exciting night of my life. Dance, Dance, Dance by Sanya M. From the book, we got told to write a book written by a bunch of misfits and narcissists writing about themselves. Stories from the S2 pupils at Drummond Community High School. They say, dance like no one's watching. Personally, I quite like that quote. I like that quote because I use it a lot when I'm dancing. I just let my emotions and feelings take over. And that's when I feel like I'm dancing my best. I feel like I'm really good at dancing because I have passion for dance. There's another quote, great dancers are great because of their passion. I think I relate to that quite well. I like dancing because whenever I am not in a good mood, I'll just dance. When I dance, it puts me in a very good mood and I feel like I'm in a different world. I feel like if I didn't dance or dance didn't exist, I would be stuck and wouldn't know what to do because dance is the only thing that cheers me up. When I dance with the music, I'm careful with what type of music I choose. I think different types channel different moods. I like dancing to mostly happy music because it cheers me up. From the book, we got told to write a book written by a bunch of misfits and narcissists writing about themselves. Stories from the S2 pupils at Drummond Community High School. Sula G. I am light. I am light. Light is bright. You can see me in the night. Just like the sun, I am fun. But my heart beats like a drum. When we talk, I'll make you smile. This is just your starter trial. When I laugh, you'll laugh too. Well, this is completely out of the blue. If you turn around and look at me, I just might be climbing a tree, upside down, all around, and everywhere I will be found. I am light, light is bright, and that is all from me, good night. Happiness can be found in the darkest of times, if one only remembers to turn on the light. Albus Dumbledore This is a story by Harper. My name is Harper. It's an unusual name because when I was born, I was the first male Harper in Scotland. So I was probably an anomaly in the system. My body is quite strange. I can turn my toe 90 degrees. I have an indentation in my arm. I can make a farting sound with my ear and knee. My personality is hard to define. I mean, people just define me as a harper. I'm confident with a professional charm. I don't have a strong Scottish accent. I don't sound like your pal Keith down at the local. No offence to any Keith's reading. You're a part of the infrastructure in the society. There was a time in school, first day and guessing your registration groups, and on the tannoy I heard could Harper please come to the reception? She's in the wrong class. So, basically, 400 people had witnessed my walk of shame. I've been doing martial arts for nine and a half years now. I'm starting to get quite good at it. I've been doing climbing for years and starting to get good at it as well. I enjoy music a lot. I play drums, guitar and piano, and I'm starting to get good at it. I've been doing it for 18 months now, so yeah, it's coming along, much like this piece of writing. I like TV. Jeez, I sound like a right normie. But let us continue. Right now, I'm swinging on my chair and thinking about something to write about. So, I'll end it there. What makes me special? Nah.
by Alexander Z. The theme of this book is What Makes Me Special. As soon as I heard that, I realised that I had a lot and yet quite little to talk about. My interests are quite typical. You can categorise me as an average Redditor. And most of the things I like have to do with video games and memes. I'm pretty sure that other people just find me weird. To them, I'm just a guy with a bad sleep schedule and no friends. At least, that's what they think of me. I'm not interested in what people think of me. Which is why I don't have any social media other than Reddit. Although, it's hard to call Reddit social media because it's just a group of people as antisocial as me. People on Reddit are mostly more intelligent than the average person, but they use their intelligence to make jokes on the internet and ask themselves philosophical or mentally concerning questions in the shower. The jokes that they make are usually very relatable and the punchline of the joke is often an image. This makes it a meme. Because I don't have a lot of originality in the things I like, I'm going to talk instead about my philosophy in life. Humanity's current point in life is to find it. It's something I heard once and realised a few months ago. It is the quote that I stick to. I realise that people don't know the point of life. They don't even want to think about it. The thing that makes this worse is the fact that people react differently to this. Some turn to religion to get an answer. Others, such as my sister, say that life doesn't have a point and others are just others. In my opinion, our current point to life is to find it. I call this kind of thinking the philosophy of a scientist, which is what makes me so special. From the book, we got told to write a book, written by a bunch of misfits and narcissists writing about themselves. Stories from the S2 pupils at Drummond Community High School. This story is called I Don't Understand Humans by Daniel W. I just can't get my head around the stupidity of some humans. Sometimes you would think that common sense would be as common as the name suggests, but no. Now, I don't want people to think that I call small children stupid. I'm not, but they're all quite gullible. This honestly scares me. Why? Well, because if they find a way to grow up and still be gullible, then they would believe too much. What if they believed everything they were told as a child? So many things could go wrong. I know some really stupid human beings. I also know forgetful humans. One time, when I lived in the borders, my friend was at his granddad's house. Nothing was really happening. Then his grad granddad came through. He had dementia. And he asked, he genuinely asked, why is my toothbrush having a seizure? And I know he wasn't being stupid because he had dementia. But some people are actually stupid. For example, who made the word Q? Who was so stupid as to spell... Spell it Q-U-E-U-E. -U -E. Why not just K? Or better, the letter Q. Just Q. Seriously, if I were to say it how it would how it's spelled, it would actually sound like this. Kyue. K-Y-O-U-E-U-H-E. -E. Come on, Tim. Let's get in the Kyue. Anyway. I think I should run experiments telling people what I'm gathering results for and then actually gather results for something completely different. Here's what I mean. Hi, I'm running an experiment on people's tendency to check emails. I would then proceed to take results on how many people are stupid enough to open scam emails or worse, reply to them. The results would have three options. Do not open scam emails open scan emails, or reply to scam emails. Then again, what if some people just don't have any scam emails? So, if 
the logic solution would be to create my own scam emails. For example, this is not a scam. Please don't reply to this email unless you want to be featured on a very special leaderboard. This so-called leaderboard would be my table of stupidity. Unfortunately, I have just realized that me pulling this off is very unlikely. As I get further into this uh, thing that I'm writing, I'm discovering how strange this whole thing is. It has fallen upon me to give this piece of writing a name because referring to it as a thing is stupid. A whole survey later, I have now decided to call this piece of writing the document of idiocy. Great. So now for the final entry to the document of idiocy. Why do I not understand humans? Well, it's simple, really. The order that humans process information is strange, as it causes everyone to have questions that just shouldn't exist. Here's one I've heard many times. Why does the bin cupboard always stink? Let me put this into context. Because without it, the question makes literally no sense whatsoever. So where I live, there are shared bin cupboards, cupboards that all the residents use. In these bin cupboards, there are those big metal bins. Obviously, they stink. I mean, they're bins. What do you expect? Rant over, I promise. The reason I liked writing about this so much is because I take great enjoyment from writing about these kind of topics. Why? I have no idea. I guess that's just one of the things that makes me different. This is a story by Tom C. The first chord I ever played was E. I developed a love for music from the age of three, mostly influenced by my dad. I got my first guitar when I was seven. It was an electric Telecaster. I would play every day and try and teach myself songs off the internet. I managed to learn how to play Back in Black by ACDC at the age of eight. Then once I had grown up and moved up to high school, I started to get into playing drums and was taking lessons. Not only was it a skive, a way of getting out of lessons, but it was fun to hit something and take your anger out on them. I also began to learn about rhythm when playing the drums. That also helped with playing guitar. The first time I played drums was in the school's music department. At first it was just hitting something and making, making a noise, but then as I progressed I realised there was more to it. It was about being precise and on time and on the beat. The hardest thing to learn is swapping over my bass drum with my left hand. I tried to play jazz style on the drums, and it's a lot to do with the ride cymbal and the snare drum. The difficulty lies in coordinating the two. Another thing that I really enjoy doing is mountain biking. I discovered it when I found a relatively decent mountain bike and did it up with one of my friends who's also interested in biking. I go to Glen Tress, which is a mountain bike park with different difficulty levels, black being the hardest and blue being the easiest. Mm -hmm.